Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and in this video I want to build on what we've been talking about over the last couple of videos about gain staging. And in particular I want to look at trying to set our meters up so that they help us when we're recording to see when we're getting a good level and when we're getting a level that's too hot. Now I'm going to talk about how this is done in Cubase because that's the DAW I run but I'll have to leave it for each of you watching this to work out how best to implement the idea that I'm talking about in your own DAW if you're not a Cubase user. The default meters in Cubase are not very helpful at all. It's a solid blue line that fades out to a greenish tinge just around 0 dB and then we've got a helpful orange blob at the top once you've really clipped everything. What we ideally want to do is to get something that's much more reflective of the kind of gain stage we've been talking about of optimising our recording levels at around minus 18 dB with a little bit of a tolerance up to say minus 12 and a really good warning at minus 6. Now the way it works in Cubase is you have these little pencils at the side and you can just pull them down until you get to the colour you want. But that's a bit abrupt. I like things a bit graduated. Um, Cubase also gives you an option to have a different colour system for the master meter. Now you might wonder why you'd want to do that but the thing is of course we're looking to get our individual tracks at around minus 18 but conventionally your output would be you'd be aiming to be in this box here so you've got to some headroom for your mastering engineer to work with but the track's not ultra quiet. You'll have enough dynamic range but you'll still have some headroom and as you'll note this master meter doesn't allow you to go beyond zero. So I'm just going to have a look at the channel meter here and as you can see it's set dead at 18 for the moment because that's what I just pulled this down to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a healthy green colour down at the bottom and I'm just going to use the standard RGB codes for green, yellow and red because they're the only colours I'm going to use. You can get more fancy if you want. So we've got straightforward green at the bottom and I'm going to set this one up to be green as well at the bottom. And I'm going to set this up to be a proper yellow. So, this at the top, plus whatever it is dB, I'm just going to set to red. So they are, top of the scale is red. I'm not worrying about these because these are just out of view. But what I want to do is I want to graduate it so that I don't get these abrupt changes of colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pencil and pull it down. Pull that one down actually. Pull that one back where it was. And I'm going to make that red. So now I've got some fairly abrupt changes of colour at minus 18 and minus 6. So what I want to do now is if I put in another yellow and then I change that to be a green what I get is a gradient between the two. So if I move that down a little bit below 18 and that a little bit above, what I get is a range of a couple of dB either side of my optimum where the change is just beginning to happen. You can alter this, take that up to minus 15. But you see, you, you've not got such an arbitrary line. And if you've got an arbitrary line, you're going to be worrying about it Whereas if what you're seeing is a change of colour, you're not necessarily going to worry to the same extent. 
so I don't think arbitrary lines are necessarily a good idea. And I'm going to add another one, again up there, and this time I'm going to make this all red. And again we're getting that blurring. So if I now move this up above and this one down a bit, you see we've created a kind of an orange zone there. And you can just adjust this until you've got a fairly clear idea that that's good, that's warm, that's hot. And you could even add another one up here if you wanted with say a purple. If you for example wanted a colour that distinctly showed you when you had clipped. For my money on a channel meter you don't really want to be worrying about that. If you're getting above minus six, it's getting a bit too hot. The fact that these aren't exactly centered on a decibel doesn't really matter. It's the visual imagery against this scale that's what we're looking for. Now, on the master meter, it's the same thing. Um, we want to have red at the top that's a fetching shade, perfect gradient. But I'm going to add in, here we are, add in a yellow and I'm going to pull that quite a way down. And I'm going to change that, change that one to green. And I'm going to add in another one about there, which is green. And again, I'm going to adjust these until my target zone is around minus 12, I think is about where we want the thing to be. So we can put that there, put that on minus 12, and then we add another one, bring that down, we can have a better band of yellow. So we'll start to see colour change from green at around minus 13 dB, get a strong area up to about minus 10, and then it'll start to get red. What I may do over the time is refine it so that it gives me a better reflection, but that comes with time and practice. You'll find what works best for you. So that's it. We've now got some good metering on our channel. And on our master meter. I'm going to OK that and uh, we now go here you'll see the varying levels that these tracks are achieving are reflecting the levels we've just set. OK so I hope that helps and until next time you take care of yourselves.